Guys, got wind this morning, power trolling, black metal head, at least six pounds, man. Beautiful trout, big fish. We're just getting started. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here, coming to you from my home studio here in the Sierra foothills. Um, Wes is out running the guide boat today. Um, I have a viewer question about trolling flies. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, an angler named Adam, he watches the channel, he's bought some of my trolling flies, and he had some questions. He wanted to know the difference between my regular metal heads, the Magnum metal heads, the classic trolling flies, and the junior trolling flies, and I'm gonna throw in a little bit of information about woolly boogers just for good measure. Before we get into the flies, I wanna show you my basic fly rigging. This is a fly that was killing it for me at um, Collins Lake this week. It is an orange standard size metal head, and here's how I have it rigged up. I've got about 40 inches of uh, 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader material there. At the top end of that, my action disc is sliding all over there. At the top end of that leader, I have a loop right there, just a, just a double overhand loop knot, or you know, some guys call it a surgeon's loop. That's where I snap in at uh, you know the end of my main line, whether I'm using lead core, running it off a downrigger or whatever. That's where I snap into my trolling swivel. Now down here at the fly, you see the action disc right there, and I run that action disc right on the nose of all my flies, save for the woolly boogers and the junior trolling flies. If I know I'm gonna be pulling a woolly booger or a junior trolling fly, those are smaller, thinner profile flies, I'll put a bobber stop right here between the action disc and the trolling fly, and that allows me to space that action disc out, say, an inch or two. I'll test it aside of the boat, dial it into the action I like. But for most of my flies, most of the time, I am running that action disc right on the nose of the fly. And guys ask me, what size action disc is this? It is the smallest size. They come in three sizes. This is the smallest one. So let's get into the flies themselves. We've got the rigging out of the way. Um, I'm using 10 pound test right now. Sometimes I use eight. I never go below eight pound fluorocarbon line for my leader. Now, here's my personal fly box. This is a fly box that I'm running with out on the boat. And these are kind of replacement flies in here because I have several uh, flies pre-rigged on leader so I can change them out quickly on the boat. But this is where I reach to when I want to get out a new fly and rig it up. And I've got all the flies that Adam is interested in represented here in my giant fly box. So let me pull out, let's pull out a Magnum metal head and a standard metal head. Grab those two, we'll start there. We gotta come in, we got a big fish on here guys. We got a big fish on. He was smoking the drag in the rod holder. I'm clearing lines because we don't want any tangles. Let me straighten this motor just a bit. Something huge. Look at that fish, Marty. Look at that fish. That's why we throw flies. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fish, guys, on a black metal head. I don't know, 10 feet deep or something. But uh, what a thrill. That fish was, that the it just went and dragged and holy moly. First fish of the day, about nine pounds. We'll take that. Yes, we will. I'll put him in the box and then we'll get some still Okay. Cookies. That's a hell of a way to start the day. That is the you. hell of a way to start the day. I'll show you that fly in a second, guys. There's, there's a fly right there, guys. We were power trolling with flies. We were going about 2.5 miles an hour when that fish hit, and uh, game on. So, the metalhead series of flies. Here's where the metalhead came from, the metalhead concept came from. Back when I started trolling flies, you know, many years ago, conventional wisdom said it is a slow presentation. Well, I started trolling all kinds of trolling flies at different speeds, but I was looking for a trolling fly that was really tailored for medium to fast trolling, and that's how I came up with the metal head concept, a fly with a metal head on it, just like that. Um, 
what I originally intended these flies to be used for with speeds above 2.4 miles an hour <clears throat> on up to and beyond three miles an hour. And they work absolutely fantastically at those speeds. But we've also found over the years that you can run them much slower. A lot of the time we're running these flies at 1.8 miles an hour and they work very well. With that action disc working against the metal head of the fly, you get a lot of vibration, you get a very tight wiggle on the fly, and uh, frankly, it drives the trout crazy. I got a tickle in the throat here, hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is a standard metal head, this is a magnum metal head. The primary, primary difference between these two flies is the size. This is a larger profile with a heavier head, a smaller profile with a smaller head. One of the things I really like about the standard metal head is it's got a, a, a somewhat broad profile, but it, it's really a pretty compact fly. It's the fly I reach for whenever I think I, I need to troll, you know, medium to fast and the fish are a little tentative. Sometimes, like last week, I was rigging it up with a stinger hook because even though it's a smaller profile fly, I still had fish coming in and nipping at the tail of the fly and I wanted a hook back there for any of those, you know, tentative nippers. I wanted them to get hooked and we hooked a bunch of them. But that's kind of the story on those two flies. This has proven to be a tremendous, I'm talking about the standard size, this pink one here. This has proven to be an absolutely deadly big fish fly. Um, just off the top of my head, we've landed a 12 pounder on it, a 13.6, several 11s, more tens than I can remember. Big fish this year came on one of these flies so far this spring, nine point some pounds, can't remember, over nine pounds came on the standard metal head. Enough said, difference between these two flies, primarily the size. They were designed for fast trolling, but they don't hesitate to troll them slowly. That tight action, um, that compact profile on the standard metal head, um, it just works, man. My favorite color is orange. All the colors work a couple years ago. The fly that, that got that 13 plus pounder, um, it was all about the pink and white. So I've got, I offer a solid selection of colors. Um, you'll find a color that you like best, experiment with them. The thing is with trolling flies, not just the metal heads, but any trolling flies, you need to get them in the water and you need to give them a chance to perform. It took me several months when I first started trolling flies to really get confidence in them. How I got confidence in them, you know, supreme confidence. I was up at Lake Elmanor. I've been dreaming of catching a 10 pound wild rainbow my whole life. I didn't get a 10 pounder, but I was trolling a standard trolling fly at about 2.2 miles an hour, 60 feet behind the kayak, maybe a couple feet deep right under the chop. And I got a seven plus pound Lake Elmanor uh, rainbow. Those fish are very hard to hook. Um, I successfully got him into the net. And uh, after that, I was sold on trolling flies. Let me grab a classic. A trolling fly. Okay, here he comes. I'm gonna try for him. I got him! I got him! Oh my god! <laughs> Look at that stud! Look at that stud of a rainbow! Oh my god! Look at that fish! What a beautiful fish! Oh my god! Oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> Those aside, have one of my my favorite classic trolling flies right here. Let me find the hook without, without destroying everything in my box. Try to keep things neat when I'm guiding because I'm out there every day and things, uh, if you let it get out of control, things tend to get pretty dang messy and that's not good. So here is one of my very favorite standard trolling flies. It looks pretty crazy here in the air, but when that gets in the water, that sweeps back into an awesome minnow profile. This one comes with the extended hook, so the hook is already at the back of that back of that wing um, it's just absolutely awesome but here's the deal on the classics the classics tend to be more useful at slower speeds and they tend to be a fly that I I reach for when the fish are being pretty aggressive 
and you know committing because it is a big profile it's a large profile fly it's a great fly when you know there's there's big fish around you want to troll a little bit slow slower you want something that stays in the strike zone that's when you reach for one of those classic trolling flies i still run as i said i still run the uh, action disc right in the nose of the fly now if you want to speed up with one of these they will certainly work but i think if you want to troll fast overall the magnum metal head and the standard metal head are a better choice for that likewise if you want to slow down and really keep the fly in the strike zone you want a, a big profile fly because you know there's some big fish around you're probably better off with a classic not to say that the magnum or the standard metal head will not work that's kind of the story on the uh, on the classic let's talk about the junior I see. feels like a nice fish now he's underneath it there we go Oh yeah, look at that big fish on that tiny little fly. Woo! What a beauty. Coming to life now. Little shad pattern fly. Some of the shad here are really small, so we went with that junior trolling fly and it uh, paid off. We had it out there maybe 15 minutes or so. Wow, look at that. Off a little line there, it's moving back in. All right. You know, I just did a commercial about these flies, and I said in the commercial, bigger isn't always better. And look at the size of that fly. That is a tiny fly, two pound trout. He jumped all over it. It looked like a little shad fl uh, fry down there, and uh, bam. Fish on, fish in the boat. We'll get him back in the water here, get him revived and get him get him on his way. So there's the fly that got that, that, you know, that husky trout. He wasn't the biggest trout we've caught, but he was still a nice two pound fish. But there's a lot of little immature shad in the lake and uh, match the hatch, catch the fish. And that's why you need some small flies in your arsenal. The bait isn't always large, but when the bait's small, big fish will eat that small bait. So nice to have some little junior flies just like that okay guys we got one of the junior trolling flies on here and we have got a massive rainbow on it just keep reeling Carrie just keep doing your thing here he comes he's tired just keep reeling look at that fish look at that monstrous fish number eight hook guys that's about a six pound rainbow Yes, in the net, right there. Look at that fish. There you go. Wow! <laughs> Holy crap! All right. You know, a lot of folks on the internet said Woo! those flies were too small. As you can see, they absolutely look, absolutely work. Wow. And look at that tiny fly, look, right there. Oh That's it, happen. that big fish took that fly, naked. Here's a junior, this is, this is a very good pattern. Anywhere the fish are feeding on dark colored bait fish, whether it's sculpins, tui chubs, just something that's darker in color. At a shad lake or a smelt lake, I would want something that's light in color. But how the uh, the junior trolling fly con you know, concept got started was we were up at Collins Lake, we were guiding, and we were struggling a little bit because the trout were feeding on little immature shad. They're actually referred to as shad larvae. They're only about, you know, a half to three quarters of an inch long. Um, we played around with small spoons. Um, we, we did get some fish on the smaller spoons, but I brought out some small light colored trolling flies, um, caught fish on the small trolling fly the very first afternoon we ran them. The first time we ran them with a client, guess what? We got an eight pound trout on a little tiny fly like that. You know, when you need to match smaller size bait, that's when you want to reach for the junior trolling flies. You want to put that bobber stop between the fly and the disc. You want to give it about an inch of space or so. Try it aside of your boat. These are best trolled fairly slowly, anywhere from, you know, 1 to 1 1.8, somewhere in that speed range. Um, put it down there. Let the trout get a look at it. Very compact package. Match the hatch. Catch the trout. This is the same kind of idea as, as my spoons. You know, we have the Magnum trigger spoon. We have the, 
the, the regular trigger spoon, we have the trigger spoon junior, and we have the micro. Those spoons, you know, go down in size with each different model. When you're on the micro, you're dealing with probably pretty finicky fish and fish that may be feeding on really small bait, really small forage. Same idea with the flies, guys. The classic fly, that's a large fly. The magnum metal head, that's a large fly. Then we get into the metal heads, we get into the juniors, and last but not least, we get into the woolly boogers. And let me grab one of those. I'll show you what a woolly booger looks like. Cool thing about my woolly boogers, if you go to you know most places, you're gonna see woolly boogers. There's a few of my woolly boogers right here. You're gonna see them in natural colors. You're gonna see the black, the olive, the brown, stuff like that. Well, I also offer them in white, chartreuse, some very bright colors because sometimes when you're trolling for trout in lakes and reservoirs, they prefer a bright colored offering. So I offer woolly boogers in bright colors. Woolly boogers, I don't know how long they have been around. It's a modification of a, of a woolly worm fly, which has been around forever. The reason that they're still around, that guys are still tying them, is because they are a devastating fish catcher. They don't represent anything specifically, but they, they, they represent a lot of things trout are interested in eating close enough to draw strikes. This is my absolute favorite fly to put on my top line, pair it with an action disc, a small sinker, scope it out 200 feet behind the boat, and uh, I catch some very big fish on, on these woolly boogers. Biggest fish last spring I caught with a young man, I believe from Modesto, him, his brother, and his dad came out um, for a weekend of trout fishing with me. Um, we had a morning that was really good. We had some overcast. We went in for lunch. We came back out. We had a little breeze. The overcast broke. We had bright conditions. I top lined a white woolly booger out there in the back of a bay and uh, that rod went off and the fish was so big and the rod was buried so much as the young man was fighting the fish at one point I said, hey, let me see that rod. Are, are you snagged? I thought he might've been snagged on something. I held it up and I, I moved it a little bit. And I, I felt it pull back. I handed it right back to him and that trout was over 11 pounds and it hit a number eight woolly booger. So, you know, offer the fish a unique offering and a lot of times it works out. How many times did that big 11 pound trout see cast masters and Rapalas and maybe even my larger flies? But guess what? One o'clock in the afternoon, he looked up, he saw that compact, you know, glistening white woolly booger. The rest was history, man. We put that fish in a net, put that fish in the box, we filleted him up, provided a bunch of great meals and uh, a bunch of fond memories for everybody involved. So don't overlook the woolly boogers. These are also great if you want to pair them with a water bobber, you know, a, a water filled bobber. You could cast that a long way from the shore, work it back in with pauses, twitches, whatever. But uh, I've been a, a big fan of the woolly booger for a very long time, back to my fly fishing days. So I'm very proud to have these in my lineup. You know, that's pretty much it on trolling flies. I get other questions about trolling flies. How deep do you run them? Any depth, man. A hundred feet deep to the surface. What season do you pull them in? Every month, every day of the year, I usually have at least one trolling fly in the spread, and sometimes I have four trolling flies in the spread. Last week at the lake, I was running four trolling flies from the surface to 15 feet deep, and all of them were orange because that's what the fish wanted wasn't a rip roaring bite, but by putting those stinger hooks on those flies and offering them, you know, exactly what they wanted, I was able to pull in some very nice fish for, for our clients. So flies are extremely versatile. They're extremely effective. The fish don't see them as often as they see spoons and spinners and plugs and stuff like that. And therein lies their effectiveness. You show the trout a novel presentation and you have a much better chance of getting hit, especially if it's a large trout and uh, nothing moves in the water like a fly. They are absolutely unique. Anglers have been using various sorts of streamer flies, you know, dating back to the 1800s to fool trout. That's part of the reason that a lot of guys have the belief that, that flies have to be trolled slowly. 
the first fly trollers were guys pulling flies on fly tackle from canoes. You can't troll all day at three miles an hour from a canoe. They would put a fly back there, they would slowly paddle along, let the canoe glide. They caught a lot of fish with those slow presentations and that started to cement the reputation you know, of trolling flies being a slow moving uh, presentation. You can troll them at any speed, any depth, any lake, any time of the year. You can troll this at Comanche and Folsom. You can troll it up at Caples Lake in the high country. You can troll it in front of wild trout. You can troll it in front of planted trout. They flat out catch fish. I'm out of here, Adam. I hope I answered your question and I, I hope I threw some light on the whole, whole idea of trolling flies to all of our folks out there in YouTube land. If you're looking for trolling flies, lead core rods and more, you know where to go. FHSfishing.com will hook you up with what you need and you'll be yelling fish on next time you hit your favorite lake. I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for all the support, guys. I'm out of here for now, but I'll be back here on YouTube real soon sharing my trout fishing secrets with you. You have a great day.